everybody. God bless you. I hope that you are enjoying. Um, joining me on this series, we're talking about the armor of God. And before we get started, we want to go a little bit further into Ephesians chapter 6. If you want to get your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Ephesians. And this is where Paul is writing about the armor of God. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but we're going to go a little bit further. But before I get started, I want to go back and say this once more. I have never considered myself a Bible teacher. There are people out here that that is their office. They operate as a Bible scholar teacher. But what has been happening to me uh, here lately is that God has, um, in my prayer time, or um, just as I've been seeking the Lord for things and for my own life, my own heart, um, I have found Him to reveal to me uh, certain things either through dreams or visions or just speaking to me. And once I have a prophetic dream or if it, once the Lord speaks to me something in my prayer time or however it comes in a, that prophetic voice, then uh, because I see in part, I begin at that point to lean into that prayer, uh, praying about what I've seen, and then I begin to seek it out in Scripture. I love this. You'll hear me say this all the time, but if the Bible promises us that if we seek Him, we will find Him. Isn't that wonderful? And so I know without any doubt that if, if the Lord shows gives me a prophetic dream and, and I don't have the full inter interpretation of what exactly I'm seeing, I can seek Him and I will find Him. And with that finding of Him, He is going to bring revelation and reveal to me through His Word what I am seeing. Because he's not a tease. He's not up there trying to say, oh, let's see if she can figure this out. You know, he he wants us. That is the communion. Come on. This is the communion. God wants to coexist, co be in co communication with you um, and us with him. This is supposed to be a relationship. This is supposed to be a, a picture of intimacy. Us and between um, the Father. And so it takes communion. To have the um, the revealing of truly His heart in order for us to uh, grow, to move forward, to even be fruit, uh, be an example of who He is on this earth. It takes that communion, and from that communion teaching, I begin and uh, continue in my prayer. Listen, nothing happens to prayer happens. Hear me, nothing happens to prayer ha happens. It's if you're feeling dead, if you're feeling like, I don't know what to do, you're not feeling anything. Listen, God is not an emotion that you feel. It's not a goosebumps. It is, it's a knowing. It's, it's going right back to that communion. But anytime I'm in this, ugh, this dry place, I know that he never leaves me. He never forsakes me. So I, what I do is I come into that secret place. I come into that prayer place where I begin to seek the Lord, seek him with my whole heart, begin to just praise him and worship him and be thankful to him. Sometimes I'm not coming to him because there's a problem, but lots of times I'm going to him and I'm just saying, Lord, I thank you, God, so much. I thank you. I love you so much. I thank you that I, that I have the opportunity to get to know who you are through your word, through your spirit. I thank you, Father, that I, no matter, with all my failures and with all my fault, I can still come boldly into your throne room. And so what happens is the Lord will just begin to give me a dream and I will step into this word and I'll start seeking it out. With When I started coming into the armor of God, I, be, I when I first had the dream, as I've said in other videos, I wasn't sure what I was seeing because I was all silver. Like I said, I wasn't wearing silver. I was silver. My hair was silver. Even the white and the color of my eyes was silver. And it wasn't for a couple days later that my husband also had a very detailed, very long prophetic dream. And in the middle of his dream, he said he looked down and his flesh, he had flesh, skin, and then his skin turned metallic. 
And I said, what did you say? What, what, did, what did you say? And he goes, I no longer was flesh, but I was silver. And when he said that, it went off like a light bulb. That is the trading off our carnal man, that old man, right? That old sin nature and replacing it with the new man or the spiritual man. The thoughts, the, the likeness, the image, the likeness of God. I knew, I knew it prophetically. I had a knowing prophetically right away that that's what it was. And so I don't want to confuse anybody because if you were to, if you was to listen to ministers preach or, t or Bible teachers teach on the armor, they're going to, they may even have um, a replica of the old soldier's armor and they're going to go through piece by piece. And I've heard a lot of the preachers say that the breastplate of righteousness was to protect their heart. Listen, I'm not going to argue with that because this our natural heart is in this area, as we all know. But I'm not talking natural. When I come to you on these videos, I want to really make myself clear. When I come to you on these videos, I'm not really coming to you as a Bible teacher. I am presenting myself as I prophetically saw this. And I went to seek the Lord in prayer and through His Word. And the prophetic interpretation I had of it is this it's kind of like communion we all know that when we take communion we'll have a cup in our hand right and we'll have i don't have bread i figured out polish <laughs> we'll have a cup in our hand and we'll have a, a, a grape juice a, or we'll have the cracker in our hand and we we demonstrate right when the the minister at front will say hold up your cup hold up your cracker let's eat together that is a demonstration of, of we're seeing it with our natural eyes we're hearing it with our natural ears the scripture and we're going through the motion of that service and listen it's beautiful it's powerful what i'm talking about on these videos is what you cannot see with the natural eyes what you cannot see with the natural ears Okay, so the Bible says that God is, is spirit, so therefore we must know him. We must dwell or have communion with him in spirit. So behind the things of the natural, there is a spiritual interpretation or there is a spiritual truth. So the, I would say that communion with the cup and pretend this fingernail polish is cracker, uh, I would tell you that this is that hearing and seeing God is a spiritual truth behind a natural demonstration, okay? So the communion was not to tell you not to take it. It was telling you, listen, when you take communion, not only hear and see and experience in the natural as a beautiful service, right? As a powerful service, but also have an understanding of what you're demonstrating in the spirit realm, all right? So I, you can see Rana's carnal flesh. You can see my skin, okay? You can see what I look like. You can see on the outside of me. But do you know what's going on behind my eyeballs? Really? None of us know. None of us know. I can't, I can't bind and loose the enemy in your heart. Okay? That was what Jesus said to Peter. He said to well, Simon Barjona at the time. He said, Simon, flesh and blood, what you see in the natural and what you've heard in the natural me did not reveal this to you. But my Father, that in, in heaven, in heaven high places has revealed to you the prophetic interpretation of who I really am. Because of this, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Okay, whatever you lose. He was saying, I'm getting ready to give you weapons of warfare that you are going to be able to have and to use in the spirit realm. Okay, how many knows that when there is a, an enemy, an unclean spirit, 
if there was a, a, an unclean spirit that come and attacked me here, I can't take this bottle of water and knock it upside its head. We can't, we don't fight a spirit with natural things. <laughs> I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Okay. And so when Paul was, I've heard people say when Paul was uh, writing this part of Ephesians, he was looking at a natural soldier. And I can just see Paul sitting back there and looking at that soldier and looking at his helmet and visualizing what that was for and looking at his breastplate and seeing all the leather and his sword and seeing all these pieces. But I know that Paul had a very prophetic insight and, and he was he was teaching us um, in Ephesians, there was a hidden secret. He's like, listen, I know what you're reading, but I need you to hear what I'm saying. Okay. So he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. One thing that I said that the Bible is going to talk about the helmet and the breastplate is going to have all these pieces. But I saw myself as one piece as one piece but each element of this one piece um had a prophetic function if i can say it like that he said put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil the craftiness of the enemy for we wrestle not against flesh and blood and if you want to know more about what we wrestle against we don't, we don't wrestle one another. We're not wrestling flesh. We're, you're not wrestling your husband, your wife, your children, your co-workers, people at church. You are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness. So there's there ain't, there ain't one thing coming at you. There's four different unclean spirits here. They says, um, that is going to, they're coming, they're crafty <laughs> and they're, if you're living and breathing, you are going to face this. And so, uh, I, I did a video and I'm expl I break down each one of these things. Okay. So that you can identify because it's going to be your natural man. It's not going to come from out here, but it'll be the natural man. The Bible says that the enemy sits and he wants to be worshipped as God, or he wants you to obey him. Uh, Satan, uh, when he visited Eve in the garden, like I said before, he presented himself to her. Come and see how I see. Come in here. Take communion with me. And he presented to her himself, hate, envy, love, all these things. And she found herself naked. Okay. So he says in verse 13, wherefore take it unto you the whole armor of God that you may be with, be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And we talked about in these videos, if you're just now hopping on and um, joining us on the armor, thank you guys for hopping on and subscribing and sharing these. But go back to the beginning, okay? So when we're talking about some of this. Stand, listen, he keeps repeating himself. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel peace. We're going to talk about all of those, not in this video, but we are going to get to them. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There's a video on here. It says, don't wave your sword if your head's exposed. <laughs> That's what the Lord spoke to me. And in, um, in one of these videos, you want to watch that. Praying always. Okay, he's telling you. He's telling you. Right. Praying always with all prayer. Not just any prayer. Okay, we're going to talk about this with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Okay. 
and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We are not going to do this today, but we're going to break that scripture down. We're going to find out exactly what, what the Holy Spirit is meaning for us to understand in that scripture. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. All right, what did Jesus tell Simon Burjana right before he changed his name to Peter, the rock, be unmovable, Peter? He said, listen, I'm getting ready to give you the, the it's, he said, it's not unto them to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. It's unto you. I'm getting ready to give you the keys to the kingdom. So here we are again. He said, I open, I may open my mouth boldly. He's for some prophesy. What a man thinketh in his heart so is he. What he knows in his soulless realm, he can speak out his mouth and boldly uh, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So that is the um, where we want to go to. But I want to talk about, remember we talked about the helmet of salvation. That is the helmet. Salvation is being healed, delivered, and made whole. So that is the helmet. We must know, we must know in our hearts, this is not your heart, this is your heart. We must know in our soulless realm, in our heart realm, that by his stripes we're healed. That he, Jesus paid the price so that we could be healed, so that we could be delivered, delivered, and that we could be made whole. Now, then let's talk a little bit on this video today about the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I've heard other ministers talk about the, 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 the breastplate. And I've heard it being taught that, you know, it, it went from, and I've even said it went from, in the natural, the breastplate covered from the neck to the navel. And it only didn't cover the front part of the, of the soldier, but also the back side of the soldier and I just I, when I said that I knew that the Lord said I will be your rear guard as well but I want to talk about this righteousness because a lot of ministers say this breastplate uh, in battle protected their vital organs their heart their lungs and it did in the natural in the natural <laughs> in the demonstration of of the armor it did it protected the natural heart the natural vital organs but we're not talking about the spiritual heart because the spiritual heart is not here the spiritual heart is right here and I think I've proven that to y'all over and over and over again so this breastplate was a, a, a part like what I saw was the helmet, the breast, all it was one thing. I compared it, and this is a terrible comparison. It was almost like, I can't even really, that wasn't really a good compare. When I said it's like a onesie. <laughs> like it wasn't separate, what what I saw, but it's it wasn't even that. Guys, listen, I no longer had dark hair. My dark hair, my natural hair turned silver. I no longer had flesh or skin. My skin was silver. My eyes, everything. I became the armor. And I didn't be, have just the helmet on. My head didn't just turn silver. And the rest of me stayed flesh color. I, I was the, the, the purpose of understanding the armor is to have access to the whole thing i truly believe prophetically that when this is right this is right okay that's why if you can have this covered you can have everything covered but if your mind is not right i don't see how prophetically that if your mind is not right you have any of this going okay i think you understand what i'm saying so 
That's why he says, what a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right. All right. So I want to get to this righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness of God. And we've talked about this before. Is right believing. Right knowing. So that just proves right there that until you get your knowing right. <laughs> how are you? Let me just say it like this. Whatever you believe here in your heart, in your mind, it will come out your mouth. Okay? If you have a, um, the enemy begins to speak to you in your temple that someone is talking bad about you, running you down. What's going to happen is, and someone comes to you and says, well, they said you are a terrible person and this and whatever people say, you know, you will, the enemy will replay that in your, in your heart. And in the natural, in the natural sense, doctors and People, people, professional people will tell you that we're habitual creatures and that they say if you do something for 21 days, you create a habit. Okay, that's in the natural. So what the enemy will do in the supernatural is he'll come to you and he'll replay it and replay it and replay it. He'll replay a, a negative thought or a memory or what someone said that brought death. Okay. The fruit of the words will bring death and you will replay it and replay it until you will start beginning to have a swirling inside of you of emotion. Okay, of emotion. When that swirling of emotion begins to take place here, then it begins to come into that flesh realm. Sometimes you even say, oh, it just made my skin crawl. Oh, I just just drives me crazy. Have you ever felt that way? That is you that's a good sign your helmet of salvation's not on. <laughs> and and it will begin to make you hurt or it'll begin to make you sad or it'll begin to make you mad. It'll make you feel these things. Keyword make. Only God is your maker. So if there is a thought or a, a something that was said that the enemy is speaking, reminding you over and over and over that's making you feel sad, making you feel depressed, then you have now, you have your helmet off and you have made the voices in the temple that is not the voice of God You've taken communion with the enemy, and now he's he's living up here what they call rent free. If you don't cast that down, then it becomes your truth. And then whatever you truly believe, or if there's something that's there that makes you just want to lash out because you're, it'll make your flesh feel good. All right? Because your helmet's not on. It will then leave here and come out your mouth. When it comes out your mouth, now you've made covenant. By prophesying, you are self-proclaiming prophecy. So now you have come in agreement with the voice in the temple. Okay, when you now have spoke it out, anything that is opposing to his word, you have now made communion or covenant with the voice in the temple or the voice in the city. When that takes place, then it's out there. And now the 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 prince of the air, the enemy, can just add and he's he's he feels like he's got you. The way out of that is put that helmet of salvation on back on and take those thoughts 
into captivity and, and put them under your feet and begin to, to prophesy, come in covenant with what the word of God says. And that's how we bind and loose in us. You can't control. You, if I have a thought right now that's not of Jesus, you don't know that. If I'm tormented or oppressed by something, you know, a lot of people, have you ever heard of people that took their own lives and their family members and people who lived with them every day that knew them best said, I, I didn't see this coming. She showed no signs of it. He showed no signs of it. He was always happy. He was always this. It's because that outward per per person doesn't necessarily match what's going on behind your eyes in the heart in the in the man in a man's heart only that person only you a preacher can't do it for you a prophecy can't do it for you laying on the hands is not going to do it for you now laying on the hands prophecy uh, praying for you speaking into you that's that that'll encourage you that'll give you but when it when it comes right down to it only you can bind and loose what's going on behind your own eyeballs I know that's a lot because there are times there's been times in my life guys there was no one there to pray for me Now, I believe in prayer, and I believe in praying for one for another, and I believe that going to someone and saying, hey, I need help. I, I'm having terrible thoughts of suicide. Yes, yes, you should say, I need prayer. I need help. Yes. But what I'm saying is when it comes down to being delivered from the spirit of suicide, you're going to have to get into the word of God and take authority for yourself. Most people don't know that. They keep waiting for a lifeline. And this is not really what I wanted to say, but I'm saying it must be for somebody. You have to decide what you're going to believe. You're going to, we're going to have to take responsibility for our own thoughts, our own actions, our words. Who else is going to if you don't? You are responsible for you. You are responsible for what you believe. This is not denominational. It's not, well, I'm Baptist or I'm Pentecostal or I'm not. Listen, the word of God is not about denomination. And I'm not stepping on your toes or stepping or uh, trying to offend anybody in a denomination. But what I'm saying is, when it comes down to it, it's the truth. It's the knowing, the communion, the dwelling of his truth that frees us. I'm talking about becoming free. So anyway, this breastplate of righteousness is right thinking in other words you cannot <laughs> cover the front of you and the back of you from these fiery darts of the enemy right until the helmet of salvation is clear because the righteousness of christ comes from that place of your mind your heart coming in alignment, coming in communion with his heart, his truth. Once this gets saved, <laughs> right? Once this gets healed, once this is delivered, when this is made whole, then what that truth in which you know begins to come out your mouth and then you begin to prophesy declare this is the prayers of the saints you begin to pray his truth for you and guess what this is the bright this is the breastplate of righteousness and you begin to 
this begins to line up. And when the enemy comes in, principality comes into your mind, you cast it down, your helmet's on, the, the breastplate of righteousness begins to surround you, the vital part of you, and you begin to speak what his word says over you. So righteousness is right believing or right thinking, right believing, right speaking. And that, when this gets right, and you begin to prophesy with the word of the Lord, you come in communion, you come in covenant with what it says, then you begin right living. In that right living, that, that standing on the word of God, that right living, then, every, then the benefits and the promises of what he has promised you in his word become tangible in your natural realm. When he says, by his stripes, I am healed. If I can get that scripture here, and the enemy saying, well, you, your back's hurting, you got a bulged disc, you got internal shingles, or maybe it's cancer, you got diabetes. And every time he comes to speak in the temple, you straighten that helmet up and says, uh -uh, I've got the helmet of healing on, the helmet of truth, the helmet of salvation, the helmet of being made whole. And his word says, then you get a knowing here. That's your dwelling. That's your communion. And that communion begins to come out your mouth and you begin to prophesy to this body. And this body has no other choice but to line up with what you already know. That's, that's how it's becoming free. And you begin to prophesy over your, I almost grabbed something else off my desk. You grab your pocketbook. This ain't even a pocketbook. You grab your pocketbook. And you be, the, the scriptures that he is Jehovah Jireh. You grab that pocketbook. Pretend this is a wallet. <laughs> right? And you begin to speak and prophesy what you know here. If he is your provision. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't even care how you do it. I just know you're going to do it. It comes out your mouth. You begin to prophesy. And the, 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 the word of God becomes tangible in your finances. And I can just keep going with this. This is the breastplate of righteousness. Okay? Can't ha have it without the helmet. It's all one, it's all one thing. It's all it all works together. Put on the whole armor. The whole thing. Okay. I want to look look at the word righteousness in, in the Hebrew letters. Because Understanding the Hebrew letters, every word is a number, every number is a word. It, it, it opens up that prophetic. But that word righteousness, or excuse me, that word breastplate in Hebrew, and there's a Greek version as well, but that Hebrew version of breastplate is three letters. It's the chet, it's the shin, and um, I thought I had it written down, but I think it's the 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 vav. I know that it is. I don't know why it's not written down here. Anyway, let me just say it like this. So that first letter there means an enclosure. If you was to look at the word breastplate in Hebrew, the first letter there in that Hebrew word is enclosure. It means to be enclosed. And it's so funny because the natural breastplate, plate, excuse me, covers the front and the back. 
It means to be fenced in. It also represents, that letter also remembers the ark. So remember when Noah, God told Noah, build a bark and go in, and God shut the door of the ark. That ark was a picture of his protection. He was going to carry Noah and his family and those animals through that those those days of storm and they would be protected and everything outside of the ark was unprotected okay but those that were in obedience those that followed through with what the word of the lord was saying they were protected that ark was a protection of god from the things that were happening around them and that reminds me of when i was became silver I, you've heard me say it, I was walking, I mean, with confidence straight ahead of me, but yet there was blackness and darkness and storms all around me, even all around my feet, but I, I, I knew, I had no thought, I had no worry, I knew that it was not ever going to affect me, I was confident that I was protected, and so that first letter in breastplate, when it's talking about the breastplate of righteousness in Hebrew, is meaning enclosure. I've fenced you in. So when this lines up with his word, the word then begins to become an ark of safety for you. And not only are you covered from what's coming at you, but you're also covered from what's coming from from things you cannot see that's coming from behind you. He says, I will be your rear guard. And so I love that that first letter in Hebrew in this word, um, and, and when you're talking about the, bre the, the breastplate, is enclosure to be fenced in. What I do love also is, is his unchanging love, his unconditional love. So how are you fenced in? How are you covered? You're covered in his love. And who is love? God. The Father has now covered you. When you get this right, you are now covered. And listen, it reminds me of y'all. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. It reminds me, if you go right back to my very favorite scripture in the Bible, Psalms 91, Matter of fact, I have thought of Psalms 91 this whole time that I've seen the the um, the uh, the armor this this picture of the armor. So he says, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty." I now can say, for those that are in your armor, your full armor, you have the right to prophesy when you're right and when your heart's right. Prophesy. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. I am covered. I'm surrounded. I'm fenced in. I'm protected. Okay. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Remember he says, the put on the whole armor of God to withstand the wiles, the craftiness of the devil so that you can withstand it. He says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. That's one. <laughs> for the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walk in the darkness, or the destruction at noonday. Does that, that look familiar to you? Right? Remember when you go back to Ephesians? The four unclean things that you're, that's coming after you, Right? He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. This scripture, I used to tell people all the time, if you are not dwelling, let me say it like this, if you don't have your full armor of God on, don't read verse 2 through 16. They're not for you. These are for, these are for those, these are for those that have ears to hear what the word of the Lord is saying, that is putting on the full armor. In other words, it starts here. It starts by crucifying your thoughts. Take it upon his thoughts. It's not my will, but thine be done. Come on, we can do this all day long. 
because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. I wanted to say that. that Thy habitation. This is that enclosure, that ark. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. What is the dwelling place? That in which you know to be his truth has now become your truth, and therefore you have become free. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, keep thee in all thy ways. Psalms 91 is for people that are fully armored. He's talking to them. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, least thou dost thy foot against the stone. Anyway, I just want to listen. That's powerful right there. I don't care who you are. It's powerful. Okay, so. So that first letter in Hebrew, talking about the breastplate, means enclosed, fenced. Okay? It also means an expression of God's love, full expression of his love. The second letter in the word breastplate is the shin. And this means the, the tooth or the rock. Remember? Peter became immovable. He's saying in this breastplate of righteousness, because of what you know to be truth, and the truth shall set you free, you will become immovable. You are, uh, the, the, shin, the, the letter shin looks like three flames, right? And this is the fire of God, the El Shaddai, God Almighty, that has enclosed you, that has fellowship communion with you okay it is a representation that regardless of what the enemy is trying to convince you to, that is truth he says keep your hearts and minds set on me he said because i do not change i am the same yesterday today and forever so that third that second letter in the word breastplate Mean is the shin. It means I am El Shaddai. I am Almighty. I do not change. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? I have a whole vision that the Lord um, gave me twenty something years ago, and real quick. And there, there was three phases to this vision. Um, I won't go into all phases, but. Um, at the end, at the third vision, I saw three fires. One fire was just like a big bomb, you know, big, huge fire outside. And I saw a bunch of people surrounded by this fire because it was just huge and big and warm. And, you know, and then the middle fire was just a regular fire, like would be like a fire pit, right? And then I saw the third fire pit. Or fire and it was just coals and the Lord spoke to me he stood in this dream to the side of me he goes which one is the right one and even though there was most most of the people were by this huge fire there were some people by or surrounded by the fire pit like they're just a regular fire but there was no one by the coals and I said that's the fire I need to stoke, the coals. And he said, you, that's correct. And when I was reading the, the interpretation of breastplate and I saw that shin, and it looks like a W with three flames at the top. I was reminded of that dream. And it means that some people, um, they'll say, oh, we got to head to over here because the fire of God is falling. And it'll look like revival and move of God. And it, it's outwardly demonstration. And listen, I praise God for moments like that. Of revivals, I have them. I go out on the road and have them. And I want people to experience. And I want the services to be good and wonderful and all that. But at the end of the day, hear me. What changes us, what transforms us is not what happens on the outside of us. But change is what happens on the inside of us. And so sometimes we run after demonstrations 
Sometimes we run after demonstration, but we don't have any truth in the demon. We, we, we get filled up on what it feels like to our carnal man and the excitement and the music and the fellowship and, and all the fun of revival. And listen, and it is. Praise God it is. But we, we get stuck on what we're doing in, in natural demonstration. We don't understand that what's going to keep us is the stoking of the coals, the things that no one can see, nobody would come to. <laughs> right? I'm trying my best. He was saying, you chose right. That, that's, that stoking of that fire keep turning those coals, that is the secret to coming into my righteousness. Because, you know, we love revival. We love miracle signs and wonders. And I know that there's going to be some powerful ones to come. I've seen them. But that ain't what's going to keep us. Come on, let's be real. Some of you have received a miracle. And you testified it. And it was exciting. But it didn't keep you. It didn't transform you. There's only but one truth. And that's every word out of the mouth of God. So in this breastplate of right, he said, listen, I need you to cover the front of you, behind you. I need, I need you with the helmet of salvation to be placed upon your head, you're going to step into my ark. You're going to step into the place where I am now. I've surrounded you. I am covering you. I have fenced you in with my love. El Shaddai, God Almighty, is what he's saying. And I am a fire, consuming fire. I'll take those things that are in you that is not like me and I will replace it with my righteousness come on somebody this is the breastplate of righteousness I'll replace it with my righteousness I'll replace it I'll replace the way you think I'll replace the, the words the prayers the, even your prayer life your prayer language is going to change and when that changes, then everything out here changes. And your natural realm begins to change. Let me go back and get one more letter. The last letter, three letters that make up the word breastplate, the last letter in Hebrew would be the Vav. And this would be the arm or the uh, the light Jesus, the light of Christ, the acknowledgement, the revelation of Jesus coming down to us. So what happens is after this gets right, this gets right. Then we began, it was, it's the, the, we began to bear, be an example of who he is. Fruit calling forth fruit. It means that we are aware that he is a present God. He's not a faraway God. It's, it's the word of God. Became, becoming more real to us. Our truth is becoming more real to us than our facts. So it's a fact that the doctor said we have cancer. But the Vav says that God is present and he says by his stripes we're healed. So that 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 part of the breastplate of righteousness becomes our knowing the transforming of the mind. And with the helmet, with the breastplate of righteousness, we begin to prove the good, the acceptable, perfect will of God in our life. Amen. Isn't that exciting? So that 
Let me put my remarkable away. <laughs> that is the breastplate of righteousness. Listen, we've only talked about two pieces. We're going to listen. It's going to be powerful. This is going to go right into prayer. Understanding communion, understanding the whole armor is going to establish you in your prayer life. And when you go to pray in the spirit, when you go to pray the word of God, knowing without any doubt that he is who he says he is, then that's when the signs, wonders, and miracles begin to take place. exciting I look forward to moving forward in this with you listen guys I'm excited 2024 the year of the door right doors opening doors closing it's time to it's time to move forward that's what love does guys thank you so much for listening uh, we are booking if you want us to come and minister prophetically minister the word in your congregation your church you can contact me at harrisonministries.com you or there's a contact button there or you can just email me harrisonministries at yahoo.com um, if you are a prayer partner thank you guys for being a prayer partner if you want to pray for Lee, become a financial partner to us because of you I get to do what I do uh, there's a text to give number on your screen and that goes right into um, and our nonprofit, Harrison Ministries International. But anyway, I thank you for your ears. I thank you for your attention. And I bless your life. God bless you. And I will see you next time.